Hello everybody. Today I'm very excited to talk to you about value streams. If a portfolio does not know the value streams it supports, there's no way it can do its job. So today we are going to talk more about it. Now, talking to all the leaders, uh, you know, this uh, picture comes to my mind. Uh, it, my children say that when I'm hungry, I'm like a screaming goat. And uh, the leaders are like, Weisland, all this is great, but what are these value streams? Uh, how does it apply to the view that I would like to have? So let's talk a little bit more about it. Now, a value stream represents um, the series of steps an organization takes to deliver a product or service to the customer. Now, before you all go bar on me, uh, let me give a good example to walk you through it. Now, this is just for educational purposes, only an illustration of a mock scenario of a company that I love, like Amazon. And let me talk a little bit more about this. Okay. Now, every company, you need to be aware of some terms, which is a uh, portfolio is very used to. The first term is a business unit. Now, when you see here, uh, Amazon uh, organizes uh, its products around its uh, business units. So that can be an America's business unit, uh, EMEA or Europe and Middle East uh, business unit or an Asia Pacific business unit. Now, if I just double click on the America's business unit alone, uh, you know, there may be multiple products and services that Amazon supports and they may interact with each other. For example, Amazon stores may interact with Amazon Prime and Amazon Logistics uh, has to work together. For example, if you're a Prime customer, then maybe shipping is free. So these uh, products and services may talk to each other in most cases. And now going down to the product lines, if I just zoom in on the um, Amazon stores, uh, Amazon Basics, Amazon Fresh, Amazon Pharmacy, uh, Amazon Elements. Uh, these all may be the various product lines under the Amazon stores. Now, Amazon may have multiple uh, business models or what I call value stream categories. For example, they may do a business to consumer directly uh, B2C model. It can have a B2B model or a P2B model. Now, what is this B2C? If I want a product, uh, half my salary goes there. Uh, my children just go to Amazon app and they buy a product. And it comes directly to them. And this may be Amazon's branded products itself. Now, B2B is for the company that I run. I have an account as a business account with Amazon and Amazon gives me or you know for the bulk orders that I do it gives me a discount as it's a business to business transaction. Now if I take a, a, a P2P or P2P uh, example uh, Amazon also provides a marketplace where all the customers can list their uh, products uh, and they can directly ship the products to the customers. Amazon just provides a platform. Now, these business models or value stream categories need not be always external facing alone. It can also be internal facing uh, because the customers may be internal uh, for, and we're going to talk more about it in the next swim line here. So let's go deeper. Now, if I had to just double click on the business to uh, consumer business model or a value stream category, for it to operate, it may need to have multiple value streams which has to work together. For example, order to cash, procure to pay, customer experience, and then everything has to be recorded and booked accordingly. So a record to report and to run the company, we need a team. So there's a hire to retire. Then there is the trigger to value, which is all the other internal operational, uh, you know, to run the operations of a company and concept to product, all the great innovative ideas that is coming. Now, the, the value streams that you see on external facing may have to very closely work with the value streams which are internal facing. For example, when a product is booked uh, and, and invoiced and, and money is coming in, it has to be properly recorded, uh, which may be an internal rep report to record value stream. So it's getting more complex uh, as now you see it gets deeper and deeper. Now, let me just take one uh, use case of a code to cash and double click on it. So if you look at code to cash, uh, next I'm going to introduce the terms called value stream stages. Now the various value stream stages or for example, order to 
order capture, order processing, order fulfillment, shipping and delivery, invoicing, payment and collection, and post sales. Now, let me zoom in a little bit more on this order fulfillment alone. Now, when I zoom in on order fulfillment, it may have multiple business processes which helps to, uh, you know, uh, you know, which runs to enable value to this value stream. Now, it can be picking, packing, labeling, stock allocation, delivery optimization, and transportation control. Now, again, just take one of that, which is delivery optimization. And if I zoom in, now I'm going to talk about all the capabilities underneath it, right? And these are, in many cases, referred to as L1, to L3 capabilities, example, um, that can be a delivery planning and scheduling capability, that can be a delivery execution capability, and a post delivery operations capability. Now, just again, double clicking on delivering planning and scheduling, uh, there may be route optimization, vehicle and resource allocation, and delivery scheduling, which is a L2, double click on it. And L3, and L3 can be route planning, traffic and uh, weather monitoring, load balancing, time slot management, customer delivery, window preferences, predictive scheduling. So all of these things have to work together. And, 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 and now uh, everything is digitalized. Nobody is paper pushing. So now comes the business applications, uh, 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 which, which is, uh, you know, using, which is, which is being supporting these business capabilities so there are this uh, geospatic uh, you know it's the geospatial and uh, uh, mapping software there's a, a load balancing and optimization tools uh, it can be a transportation management system or tms uh, and, and again each of these uh, business applications will have a business owner and if any one of these capabilities is impacted uh, the owners uh, you know are, are ultimately accountable and and it's very important to do this uh, uh, mapping uh, that way if a server goes down we need to know what business uh, uh, processes and applications and capabilities are all impacted right now if I were to take uh, the geo, uh, the, the first uh, uh, business application, uh, it has Google Place APIs uh, and multiple other applications, which has to support that one business application. Now you see that it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, no wonder the business leaders uh, are going bar on me. Uh, and, and all of these applications are uh, supported by multiple departments now. So uh, what about that, right? And, 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 and there is a team which is building and supporting and any change happening is, is uh, to any change which is comes, to, comes to the technical team, for example, uh, is to add, modify or delete one, one of these uh, business uh, capabilities. So, uh, and, and then today I'm going to stop there and another day I'll come and expand on value stream identification and mapping. Uh, but uh, right now I just want to introduce this term value streams and the complexities behind it, right? So let me let me go a little bit more deeper and show you some cool, uh, you know, hands-on stuff, right? Let, let's do that. Now, let me go inside uh, uh, this uh, piece and what you see here, I'm going to use ServiceNow as a tool, uh, as a platform, a low-code platform and demonstrate a hands-on experience of managing these uh, value streams uh, in, in, in an organization. Okay. So, um, and uh, all the cool thing with the uh, low-code platform with ServiceNow, which we are partners of, is uh, all of these products, which is in each of these boxes, talks to each other on a, a common data model, which is pretty cool. And we can orchestrate all the workflows with intelligence very beautifully. So uh, today, the demo that I'm going to show uh, involves multiple products talking to each other uh, to enable these cool functionalities. So let's go. Now, when you talk about architecture, business and IT architecture, these two have to work together. And an enterprise architecture is not about pretty pictures. Uh, it's about aligning business and IT to achieve strategic objectives. So uh, let me uh, let me let me let me go a little bit more deeper and show you some hands-on demos. How about that? Yeah. So let's do that. So I would like to take the example of, um, uh, you know, of, uh, wait, what can I take? Okay, cool. Let me take the example of um, um, 
um, um, for example, record to report and, and showcase some cool things for you all. Okay, in one click, uh, you should be able to, uh, in ServiceNow, uh, uh, you know, map uh, all the business capabilities it, you know, which is, uh, you know, support, which is attached to a business process and the IT, uh, the business applications which support it. And, and, and it's very easy to do that. And I'm going to double click on how to do this, right? Now, to show that, uh, you need to first take a step back uh, and understand uh, some important things and, and, and a diagram which uh, visualizes the relationship between all of these uh, beautiful concepts here. Okay, so let me do that. All right. Now, if you look at this picture, it summarizes the relationship between uh, all these uh, uh, key things that I talked today. It, I mean, obviously, we are all uh, centered around value stream today in this discussion, uh, but, but everything is triggered by a stakeholder, an end customer, an internal customer. And finally, it ends with the stakeholder getting the value. Now, this value stream category may be a group, multiple value streams may have to work together to support this value stream category. Uh, but then it's very important, like we explained, to understand that a business unit is organized around products uh, and the products enables uh, this value stream cat, you know, and, and the value stream category just enables these products to the customers, right? And we also talked about uh, various other pieces like for example the stakeholder might participate in a value stage and and as we discussed a value stream also consists uh, of value stream stages right and, and and then this is very important to understand this relationship uh, to really appreciate value streams now if you look a little bit more closely uh, now the process the business processes operationalizes the value stream stages and uh, the capabilities uh, the, you know in in operationalizes the business processes and, and and you see this relationship going on here and and it gets a little bit uh, uh, very interesting and and, and that's why uh, people say bar when they come to value streams but we are going to double click it for you today right uh, to understand this a little bit more deeper uh, you need to understand it relations to its portfolio uh, why is the portfolio concerned on this now you you see a very high level uh, hierarchical structure now everybody will be like weislin all this is great uh, i may be the svp of uh, amazon prime uh, i will be like weislin all this is great in system thinking but can you show me the okrs as it applies to my particular work stream uh, or uh, or uh, or a CTO may say, can you just uh, talk about my particular, uh, you know, OKRs and KPIs and and, and the roadmaps, uh, capacity planning. So everybody want a different view. A CEO may say, hey, how is our uh, Amazon a store product doing or a particular amazon product line like amazon fresh how is it doing so so the so the so there is different types of views leaders want and portfolio uh, management is in a spot to manage budget, timelines, capacity planning, demand management, uh, OKRs, as it applies to these various personas in an organization. Hence, I'm going to introduce this term called lenses. So there are multiple lenses that a portfolio should be capable of uh, to provide that data view. You know, uh, for example, for a business unit, maybe for a product or a product line, a, a value stream category, maybe it's a B2B as an example. Uh, order to cash value stream, for example, uh, maybe one step of, uh, of a stage of value stream, which can be order fulfillment. It can be uh, the various uh, business processes. So it's it's important to give these lenses. Uh, and, and in the next series, I'll be showing you all the hands-on you know, demo on that. Uh, but now I want to go back and show you some even more cooler, uh, you know, demos uh, in this uh, uh, in the service now yeah so let me show you how value streams are managed in service now right so if i go here and type value streams all right so uh, under this value stream i'm going to take for example order to cash and if i take order to cash uh, these are the various business processes under order to cash and if I click on this authorize and manage credit uh, here it clearly uh, you know represents 
the um, capabilities, business capabilities, and also the impacted business applications in, in one shot. And if you just want to see the relationships uh, between all of the above, yeah, like I showed you, uh, you can very easily see the relationship between the business processes, the capabilities, and the applications. Now, let me go one step even cooler, right? Uh, let me go back to this diagram and let's say, you know what, Weislin, all is there a way that we can automate all of these things using artificial intelligence, machine learning techniques, machine learning techniques? Absolutely, yes. Using ServiceNow's powerful, uh, you know, products in one click, you should be able to, uh, you know, scan all the configurable items in your uh, uh, in your organization, and it beautifully documents all the business uh, applications, the capabilities, the processes, the value streams impacted. As an example here, it shows all the servers and everything uh, which is supporting this order fulfillment service right here, right? So the message is very clear. The bigger, the, the key message that I would like to say is uh, value stream is a beautiful topic, uh, but sometimes people oversimplify it without automation and, and, and using powerful tools and AI, uh, this can become a very complex task. Yeah. So I want to pause here as a, a logical end, but I will double click on it. In the series of Lean Portfolio Management, uh, today was an effort to a little bit understand uh, more about uh, value streams, its relationship to portfolio, and the various lenses. Uh, again, I would end this conversation uh, with this concept of uh, lenses one more time. Let's see that, okay? It is important to understand that the leaders may want to view uh, the data in multiple lenses. Uh, and, it's, and if you understand this data structure beautifully, uh, you can provide them as a lean portfolio management, all these uh, data as it applies to budget, it can be OKRs, it can be KPIs, uh, incoming work and everything uh, by just changing the lenses. So if you don't configure your portfolio carefully, it's doomed because uh, you know a portfolio is key for the organization. And there is a very popular saying that the fish rots from the head so let me thank you all for listening to you and i'll put more and more videos on this and you can also attend our uh, uh, you know hands-on training on these pieces but god bless you all for listening have a good day take care